this little mistake cost me a lot of time and money. So I thought I'd share it with you so you don't make the same mistakes as me. In this video, we're going a bit deeper into copper pores in KiCad, how they actually work, how priorities can completely change your design, and how you can avoid hidden issues before you hit the order button on your next PCB. So the incorrect PCB that I'm talking about that I have ordered and it does not work is this one over here. So you can see I have a regulator over here that's supposed to produce 12 or 5 volts for me. And this is the regulator IC and this is an inductor. You can see my tracks between the inductor and the IC have completely disappeared. So I had my board set up and most of my routing I did with copper pores as you can see on this board over here and then I had ordered the board which was working fine and I wanted to make some other changes to it. When I was making changes I added a copper pour over everything because the previous board was very bare in terms of the copper weighting so I added a copper pour over everything and basically just ran out my Gerber files not realizing I had not set up the zoning priorities properly. KiCad uses something called zone priorities to decide which pore takes precedence when two pores overlap each other. Because I had left everything at default, my big ground pore basically won the fight and other similar pores which were supposed to be critical for the uh, power and signal completely disappeared as you can see on this design. So none of the regulators on this board actually work. So I'm supposed to have a 5 volt regulator a uh, 12 volt regulator, a 3.3, and I think I have a minus 24 and a plus 24 volt regulator. Now the good news is I have corrected the error in a future design and ordered the boards and found the boards to be working completely fine. So obviously to me, at a glance, the board looked fine. The, the outline was there, the copper was filled, but what I didn't realize was that some zones had vanished underneath the ground plane. I only noticed after assembling the boards and wondering why certain nets weren't connected, so obviously that meant redesign, reorder, more time lost and some money wasted as well. And speaking of reordering boards, I've got to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay not only make it affordable to get boards fabricated, but they're fast, reliable and the quality is very consistent. Trust me, when you make mistakes like this, and you will at some point, it's a lot less painful knowing you can get a new set of boards quickly and without breaking the bank. They also support advanced capabilities like multi-layer boards, flex PCBs, turnkey assembly, stencils, and also CNC machining and 3D printing if that's what you're into. So whether you're prototyping a quick idea or building something more serious, PCB Ways got you covered. Big thanks to them for supporting the channel. Check out the link in my description to try them out for your next project. So now let's take a look at how pores actually work in KiCad. When you create a copper zone, for example, a ground plane, it fills all available space while respecting the clearance rules. So what we can do is maybe use this project to try that out. So let me delete the pore that I added. So you can see over here, when you create a copper zone, for example, a ground plane, it fills all available space while respecting the clearance rules that we've set up. But when you add multiple zones, as you can see in my design, KiCad needs to know which one takes priority. That's where the zone priority levels come in. So if I was to select one of these zones over here, and let's bring my copper pore back in, I double click on that, and you can see this layer has a zone priority level of zero. Now, if I was to change that to another level, it would basically mean it's gonna take priority over something else. So let me change the ground pore to priority level one, or two to see what happens. And you can see the copper pore that I had over the um, the inductor has completely disappeared. And this is basically what I did in my last attempt to build this board. So I had poured my uh, ground pore without realizing that it had a higher priority level, which resulted in this board over here. Now, when you pour copper and you set it to zone uh, priority level zero, and if they are the same level, you won't get one fighting the other to control the board space. But if there's one higher than the other, then the zone with the higher level will win out. So what you want to do is make sure that your ground pool is always priority zero. Obviously, in some special cases, it might be a little bit different. So to recap, every zone has a priority number. Higher number wins. So if you have a ground pool at priority zero, which we do on this design, and a smaller VCC pool or something else like this net over here with priority one, the second pole will carve out space for itself even if it overlaps with ground. So I would not recommend um, leaving all the zones at zero just because I'm not sure if whichever pole gets calculated last 
override the other one and you could end up missing connections and I'm not entirely sure how the ground port works if the priority levels are the same. So always work with the priority levels in um, one or zero basically because um, most of the time I'm just going to have my ground and some other pour over the top. So set yourself uh, with ground at zero and then any other pour set it higher. So I'm only sharing this video because I think it's important that you know I share my mistakes as well. So hopefully one of you will save yourself a lot of trouble just by knowing this trick and it's really important to think about your copper pour hierarchy for example, you might want your power pores to have higher priority than ground, so always get them preserved. Ground can usually flow around the nets without issue, but power traces disappearing, that's a big problem. And in my case, obviously made my board completely not function. So obviously on the screen now, you've got a board that's been set up properly and it is functional. So I've got this board ordered and I know it works. So here are a couple of best practices. Always assign a higher priority to smaller critical pores like uh, specific signal planes or VCC. Keep your ground pour at a lower priority so it fills in the gaps. And every time you make changes, remember to refill zones to update the copper pour correctly. And finally, um, if you're ordering PCBs, make sure you do a DRC check before you press the order button. So these simple steps can save you from a lot of nasty surprises. And obviously the most important thing, because I think I made two mistakes on this board, is always to run a DRC check after making minor changes, no matter how minor you think they are. Don't rely on your previous DRC runs, especially if you've changed anything on your PCB. A single oversight like this can cost you weeks of time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.